Good afternoon and evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is David Schlotthauer here with another detailed weather forecast for April the 28th, 2023. As you know, we did cover severe weather live earlier, and now that that's done, let's take a look at what is ahead for the future. But before we do, Let's take a look at today's sponsor. I am incredibly excited to announce that I'm officially an affiliate with TriologyMaps.com. The link will be in the description and the pinned comment below. Triology Maps has created the highest definition and the most customizable digital maps you can find anywhere online at a highly affordable price. These maps are so customizable due to a very unique and innovative layering system that makes it possible to create whatever map you like. Making weather maps that look incredibly professional has never been this easy before. So if you want the highest definition, the most customizable, and the most professional looking weather maps that you can make up for a very affordable price, go ahead and check out TriologyMaps.com. Again, also be sure to use my 20% off discount code by going to TriologyMaps.com and then entering the code DAVID before finalizing your purchase. Welcome back. Here's a look at the European model for Friday afternoon, April the 28th, and we can see where that line of strong thunderstorms and large hail are located along to go with significant wind damage that has been tracking along across central and southern Texas. That's going to be the same system that's going to lead to even more bigger problems across the southeast into the eastern seaboard, then eventually into the northeast as we could be looking at tropical storm to near hurricane force winds right off the coast of the eastern seaboard for the latter part of the weekend into early next week. So let's go forward here and look at the European. This is a for tomorrow evening. This is April the 29th, and we can see where that surface slow actually is located. More severe weather problems expected for southern Georgia, Alabama, and Florida for the day tomorrow, but it doesn't look to be nothing like it was today where we had quite a bit of going on. But then, of course, to the north of that, we have some rare May snow showers to talk about, even so this is not May in this clip, though. It's going to extend into early May. So technically, some rare May snow is forecasted. But now, let's go into Sunday. Because Sunday is going to be a bit of an interesting day for some locations. Especially for the eastern seaboard. Take a look at how dynamic this surface slow actually is. We clearly got a cold front right here. We got a uh, kind of a advecting warm front. And we got a surface slow that is going to be located over, say, uh, Maryland, over portions of Delaware, as well as New Jersey, Pennsylvania. This is going to bring about some really strong winds that could reach 25 to 40 miles an hour and some cooler temperatures, of course, in the wake of that system. But not only that, the main surface slow is up here across Michigan, uh, across, say, Wisconsin, Illinois. You're going to be seeing some snow showers out of this. I mean... You guys thought you guys were done with the snow, right? Nope, you're not done with it after all. Let's go into this, uh, Monday early morning. Look at this. Wisconsin going to deal with quite a bit of snow showers out of this. And you can see the blue on your screen indicating moderate to heavy snow. Maybe some blizzard conditions and whiteout conditions due to the strong gusty winds that are anticipated. And of course, it is going to be much colder than average because of the colder air that is going to be swinging in in the wake of that system. All right, taking a look at our national map yet again. Let's continue to bring this forward. We can see by May the 1st and 2nd, again, some rare May snow for some locations and even for the mountains of the Sierra here, like California and Nevada, could squeeze out some snow chances by early next week with some much colder temperatures. In fact, Today, it is currently 93 degrees outside. In a couple of days, we're going to have temperatures in the 60s and 70s. So a big drop in temperatures here back west, thanks to that trough. And then this main low pressure system over here in the northeast will be moving out eventually by the middle of next week. While all attention turns on across the west with more active weather yet to come. I'll have more on that in a couple of days since this weather pattern is looking quite busy.
So now how much rainfall could you see out of this nor'easter-ish? I don't think you could call it a nor'easter. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. There's not going to be a whole lot of snow at all with this, except for the Great Lakes and maybe for the highest elevations here of West Virginia. But otherwise, many locations will just have a lot of rainfall and gusty winds. So rainfall totals here in the next three or so days, anywhere between two to four inches across Pennsylvania and much of New York. New York City here could see as uh, as much as two to four inches of rainfall. In fact, let's go to the northeast to show you that sector in greater detail. And you can see there anywhere between about two to three inches, maybe four inches for some locations. Expecting quite a bit for the Mid-Atlantic also. Anywhere between maybe two to three inches of rainfall. For the southeast, you're also looking at anywhere between maybe one to three inches of accumulated rainfall and water. So watch out, maybe some river flooding, maybe some small stream flooding to go along with this. But again, it's going to be the winds that we're going to be talking about too in this video. So another thing we got to talk about is the snow. Quite a bit of snow in the next five days. I mean, these are ridiculous numbers. I mean, you go right on the border of Wisconsin, right into, say, portions there of Michigan, kind of the upstate Michigan region, you could see quite a bit. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, two to three feet of snowfall in the next five days. Now, if you just use the 10 and 1 ratio, you're going to see as much as three to maybe four feet of snow. How about that? Maybe not four feet, but like three feet or so. So it just depends on the snow um, conversion you use. But either way, big time snow. For the up portion there of Wisconsin and the upstate of uh, Michigan, could see some intensive snowfall accumulations and blizzard conditions too. Also across, again, much of Canada here, south of Hudson Bay, you might see anywhere between one to two feet of snowfall. I mean, that's as significant of a May storm you can get uh, on a rarity scale. Rare May snow is the nickname that we're getting, um, that we're giving this storm. All right, so now the winds are going to be a big deal, all right? We're going to just fast forward this all the way through, um... Let's go to Sunday here. So Sunday morning, winds anywhere between maybe 15 to 25 across the northeast. Winds coming offshore here in Georgia and the Carolinas uh, will have winds 20 to 30 miles an hour. But look what happens. Once this surface low really um, gets going, you're going to have some significant winds here. 20 to 35 miles an hour with gusts up across the northeast that could exceed 40 and 50 miles an hour. So enough to bring down trees power lines uh power outages will result so just be aware of that uh, for the latter part of the weekend it's gonna be stormy then say uh tomorrow tomorrow looks pretty good but sunday afternoon into monday doesn't look so great at all so then the winds are going to be with you um once the front moves through, it's going to be all across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and even for Wisconsin, where you could have wind gusts between 35 to 45 miles an hour. So again, enough probably for blizzard warnings. I think we're going to have some sort of warnings up there in the northern Wisconsin region as this storm really continues to bring in a lot of colder air and strong gusty winds associated with it. The reason why we're seeing this is because of this trough. We can see it here on the European model for Sunday. Main trough up here in the Great Lakes, a short wave trough orbiting around the main low. So a little bit of a Fujiwara effect here, part of that system that's going to help amplify things. And so by Monday, we have a pretty strong jet streak that is going to be in place. And then that moves out of the area by the middle of next week towards like May 5th and the 6th. Looks like the pattern is going to change in some degree. Well, if you did like today's video, folks, please consider sharing this with your family and friends on social media. You guys are really awesome. I do appreciate the super awesome diligent support that we have provided thus far on the YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check out TriologyMaps.com. There will be a link in the description below this video. Enter a 20% discount by entering your my name, David, in the uh, coupon code when you make your purchase or if you want to purchase any of these maps. These are really good maps, folks. You cannot miss out on it at all. Uh, definitely detailed 16K quality to your fingertips. It's really 
cool and awesome. But anyways, that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching.